said, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're
the Lord ain't it to celebrate his name and he is definitely Jehovah Jireh providing for all of our needs I thank God for him being there for us right not just for me but for us so he is good and gracious first off we want to welcome all of our guests God bless you thank you so much for coming out and celebrating the Lord with us we know you could have been anywhere else this morning but we praise God that you came out to celebrate Jesus with us. Listen, we have a connection card. We would love to stay connected with you. And it's digital, so you can just take your phone out. And uh, you can be able to let us know uh, who you are. And uh, we would love to be able to pray for you and keep you informed of what's going on in the church. Hey, listen, this uh, right after service, we have a party for the kids uh, with the Angel Tree kids. Come on, let's show God a hand cup of praise for that. Amen. How we're able to be a blessing, right, uh, to those in our community as well as a blessing to the kids among us. Amen. And so please, as they come in, right, show them some love, right, encourage them. Um, and this is something that we are excited that we're able to do and we do every year. All right. So it's a blessing. Listen, we are having church uh, on Christmas Day. All right. And on New Year's Day. So please come on out. You can open up your gifts right before church, all right? And then come on and be able to celebrate Jesus with us. What better day, right, to celebrate our King than on the day we have set aside to represent his birth, right? No, he was not born on December 25th, but that is a day that's set aside for us to celebrate that. So what better day to celebrate him than on the day we've set aside for it? And listen beginning the first Sunday in uh, December we are starting 21 days of prayer all right listen we're gonna be praying together as a church right so we'll have some information for you so how you can pray uh, individually during the week but also how we're gonna be praying together corporately it is important that we are a people of prayer right Jesus says that the house of God should be a house of prayer so let us make sure that we're doing that and also, we also have, uh, we're collecting um, uh, items for uh, the homeless ministry, all right? So hats and gloves and socks. So if you're able, while you're out and about to see any of those, uh, we want to be a blessing to uh, those without homes who are living on the street, all right? Uh, so if you're able to do that, we also have, we have a box in the, um, in the hallway so you can drop that in. All right. And also, I want to let you know that our um, nursery is open. All right. So if you want to be able to take your children in there, all right, to be able to do whatever you got to do with your kid. Right. Um, it's open. All right. There's a TV in there. It's warm. All right. We want to be make sure that we have a blessing and it looks nice. Praise Jesus. Uh, so please go and uh, use it. All right. So I want to go ahead and dismiss our uh, kids teens on down for their small group and we're going to jump into the word of the Lord if you have your Bibles we are going to the gospel of Luke the gospel of Luke we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 22 going to verses 14 through 20 
say, yeah, so the, the kids are dismissed. All right. Luke chapter 22. Verses 14 through 20. I'm reading from the New King James Version. The Gospel of Luke. And when you get there, we ask you please stand in reverence to the word of the Lord, if you are able. And it begins and reads as follows. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20, likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his word. May we bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you, O Lord, for another Sunday where we have the privilege to come together and to lift up the name of Jesus. Thank you for this special moment, dear God. We're able to set aside to be able to praise you and to lift you up. You deserve all the glory, all the honor, all of our adoration. Thank you, dear God, for keeping us and protecting us. Thank you for this moment, dear God, as we gather around your word. Speak to your people. Encourage their hearts help us dear God to hear from heaven now father we pray that you will speak to me and through me let your people not hear me but you Holy Spirit who dwells within me we bless you right now in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray amen you may sit please so we have come to the conclusion of our sermon series, which we have entitled Give Thanks. And part number five in the series, we have entitled The Lord Gives Thanks. And so we've been in this series now for a while talking about the importance of giving God thanks and the importance of being grateful for everything God has given us. Because even in the midst of problems and trials and tribulations and even in the midst of the issues of life, we still have a lot to be thankful for. So we must remind ourselves continually to have an attitude of gratitude. Especially now as we look forward to next Sunday, as we think about Christmas and we celebrate the birth of Christ, that we need to be thankful. As a matter of fact, we need to give thanks to God because without his birth, there is no death or a resurrection. So we need to thank God that he was born for us. But this morning, we're taking some time to look at when Jesus gives thanks. And now Jesus did not give thanks sparingly. No, he gave thanks to the Father continually. The Father continually receives thanks from Jesus. Matter of fact, we even see scriptures where, like John 6 and 11, when after Jesus has fed the 5,000, he gives thanks to the Father. 
Then in John eleven forty one, when Lazarus is raised from the dead, Jesus gives thanks to the Father. And in Luke chapter 10, verse 21, when the disciples returned from ministering, the 70 that he sent out, when they came back, Jesus gives thanks to the Father. Jesus was always thankful. He was always grateful for what the Father was doing in his midst. And can I tell you, we need to follow his example. We need to follow his example of being thankful and grateful for everything God is doing and what he shall do for us. The occasion we are looking at this morning is where Jesus gives thanks in Luke chapter 22. When Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper of what we know as communion. Chapter 22, it opens during the, the last week of Jesus' earthly ministry. It is during the Passover that Luke is writing about. The Passover is the time when the Jewish people would come together and, and celebrate their liberation from slavery. It's when God delivered them out of bondage in Egypt and gave them and instituted them for to kill and gave them structures to and kill a lamb and put the lamb's blood on the doorpost so that the death angel would pass over them while he ju brings judgment on Egypt. God sent the deaf angel to Egypt, and when he passed over the houses, we see that the only houses that was not affected was those who had the blood of the lamb on them. Can I tell you, we need to celebrate God for the blood of the lamb. We need to celebrate the fact that God's wrath will pass over us because we have accepted Jesus and believe that he is our Lord and Savior. In our text this morning, for the Passover, Jesus has already sent Peter and John to secure a location for the meal. Jesus told them about a man who would let them be able to use the upper room in his house so that they can have the Passover meal there. And it is in the upper room that we pick up our text this morning in verses 14 through 20. Now, Dr. Luke, he, he informs us of what happens in the upper room during the Passover meal. But what's interesting is that all four of the Gospels talk about this Passover celebration. With, with some authors giving less details and other authors giving more, uh, such as in Matthew chapter 26 and Mark chapter 12, they give fewer details about what happens at this moment because they spend less time in the verses only talking about what Jesus did to institute it. But in John, he spends five chapters verses chapter 13 to chapter 17, discussing what occurs during this moment and never mentioning the Lord's Supper. But Luke, he, he gives a little bit more information than Matthew and Mark, letting us know what Jesus gives and tells us about communion. The Lord's Supper is a topic that we must talk about. It is a topic that we must learn about and teach on. Why? Because it is something that we do as a church often. We regularly come together to have communion. And because of its great significance and because Jesus told us to participate in it, we need to teach on it. When Jesus and the twelve had arrived in the upper room, Jesus begins to teach them. He begins to talk to them about this moment. And this Passover will be different than other Passovers that Jesus had with his disciples. This is the final Passover. He's had three with them. This is the final one with him and his disciples. This Passover is going to be special. This Passover is different. Matter of fact, he says in verse 15, he says, With fervent desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Jesus is basically saying, I've been waiting for this moment. I've been anticipating this moment because this moment will be different than the ones before. This one is special. Why? It's special because we're going to do this before I 
suffer. Suffering speaks of him giving his life for us. His suffering speaks of him being the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of this world. The suffering speaks of him being mocked and beaten and crucified and dying on the cross. His sacrificial death was like the lamb the Hebrews killed and used the blood to cover the doorpost so that the death angel would pass over them. Jesus is our lamb and he has sacrificed himself on the cross for humanity to save us from the wrath of God he lets the 12 know that this will be the last time he participates in the Passover celebration. He says the next time that they will participate in this together will be at a feast that happens in the kingdom of God. It's interesting. He's speaking of something future. He, he's talking about Revelation 19, verses 7 through 9, where the glorious marriage supper of the Lamb occurs, where we, the church, those who believe in the death of burial and bodily resurrection of Jesus will be with him on earth as he starts his millennial reign. Luke narrates for us three times when Jesus gives thanks during the Passover celebration. Verse 17, he says he, he took the bread and he did what? He gave thanks. Verse 19, he took the bread and did what? Gave thanks. Verse 20, it says it a little different, but means the same thing. It says, likewise, likewise, meaning also giving thanks, he took the cup. What we see here is that Jesus repeatedly gives thanks, and he is thankful for a couple of things. First, he's thankful for the physical items that are there, the cup and the bread. Are you thankful for the physical items in your life? Are, are you thankful for the, 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 the simple physical things that are at your disposal? I'm not talking about the big stuff. I'm not talking about your house or your cars or your savings or your investments. I'm talking about the, the little things, the necessities of life like food and water and clothes and shoes and your job and your health. Are you thankful for the simple things of life? The, the, the cup and the bread represents the necessities of life, the simple things. Cup, something to drink, and bread, something to eat. You, you know, we can get all excited about the big stuff that God does and can do, but I want us to pull back a little bit and be thankful and grateful for the little things. Because in reality, the little things are the big things. Because the little thing like breathing is a big thing when you can't breathe. The, 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 the little things like mobility. You ain't got the car you want, but at least you got a car. Right? Or you ain't got a car, but at least you got money to get onto the bus. So mobility, food, and shelter. You can't eat all of the stuff you want, and you probably shouldn't, but you can't eat all of it. Right? But at least you can eat something. Things like clean water not just water clean water that you can turn on your faucet and there is clean water the necessities of life I think we need to be giving God thanks for providing the necessities of life the everyday things generally we take for granted in life Jesus was grateful for the necessities of life he was grateful for the the cup and he was grateful for the bread he shows gratitude to the father and then secondly Jesus is grateful and thankful because of what these items represent the, the, the unleavened bread that was once associated with Israel's past bondage in Egypt and their liberation is now turned into the symbol of Jesus and his sacrifice Verse 19 says, this is my 
body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> the bread symbolizes is Jesus giving all of himself. Giving every part of himself for you and me. He, he, he sacrificed every part of him for us. And I am so glad that Jesus didn't do it halfway or partially. No, no, no. He gave up all of himself to save me. He, he had total surrender. Totally obeying the Father for you. And me, I'm so glad that he was like, you know what? I'm going to stop at this. He didn't say, I'm going to stop at this first beating. No, he kept going. Not only was he beaten, then he took a cross and walked up a mountain with it. And I'm glad he didn't stop at the top of the mountain, but he literally laid down and allowed people to drive railroad spikes into his hands and into his feet and then lift him up. I'm so glad that he went all the way through the process and died for me. But you know, if we're so glad that he went all the way, why do we stop halfway when it comes to him? Why, why do we stop and say, oh, I just can't do that part, Jesus, because that part is too much. That hurt too much. That don't feel right. No, I don't like that. I had different plans for my life. Right? All of that stuff. We we'll say, Lord, I'm not going there, but thank God you went there for me. That don't seem fair. If he could sacrifice for you, Surely you can sacrifice for him. Giving him all of our lives. Every part of our life giving to him. To where we're not just giving to him lying and drugs and sex and Sunday. Listen, he, won't, he don't just want Sunday. He want Monday through Saturday too. Right? He want, he want all of it. Right? Because what we'll do, we'll give him a little bit and then we'll want to hold on to the rest. Right? We'll give up lying, but we'll hold on to pride. We'll give up drugs, but we'll hold on to greed. We'll give up sex, but hold on to lust. We'll give up Sunday, but want to hold on to the rest of the week. No, no, no. He don't want a portion of you. He wants all of you. Every part of us he, he wants. He wants us to surrender to him totally. The, the cup symbolizes the shed blood of Jesus. It, it, it symbolizes the, the blood of the Lamb of God, which allows humanity now to enter into a new covenant or a new relationship with God. That's why Jesus says in verse 20, he says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Now, now Israel's covenant was instituted also with blood, but their institution of blood came through the death of an actual lamb, an actual animal. But in a similar way, or rather a greater way, Jesus shed blood enables us to now enter into a covenant relationship with God. Not based on an animal sacrifice, but based on the actual lamb of God, Jesus the Christ, and his blood being shed for us. And where Israel would have to sacrifice a lamb continually so that their sins can be forgiven, Jesus sacrificed his life once so that our sins can be forgiven forever. Thank God we are under the new covenant and not the old covenant. He sacrificed himself once for us. Now, I know we don't talk a whole lot about the blood no more, but can I tell you, the blood still works. It still works. It still has power.
power. It has power to pay for our sins and it has power to cleanse us from the sins we have done. His blood still has power to cleanse the sin sick soul and to make us whole. His, his blood still has the power to turn sin which is like scarlet into white as snow. Thank God for the blood. It's by his blood that people can move from sinner to saint. It's by his blood that we move from hell bound to heaven bound. It's by his blood. It's by his blood that aliens and strangers become citizens and joint heirs with Christ. Thank God for the blood. It was his blood that cleansed my soul. It was his blood that made me whole. Without the blood, my sins can't be forgiven. Without the blood, my eternity is dark and grim. But because of his blood, it is filled with fellowship and light because I will spend it with him. If Jesus can give thanks for the cup and the bread, surely we can give thanks for the cup in the bread. Now, now, yes, I understand that the, the Lord's Supper, right? Communion is a serious moment, which we will do on the first Sunday. It's a serious moment where we should examine ourselves to make sure that we are right before God. But it's also a time that we give thanks to God. It's also a time where we celebrate God because of what Jesus has done for us. We must be thankful and grateful for what he has provided for us. He's provided for our necessities, our daily needs, and our spiritual needs. We need to thank him for the blood and for the bread. So because Jesus, God's son, didn't hold anything back from us and gave his entire life to save us, we should also celebrate him when we have communion on first Sunday. Yes. On the first Sunday, the new year, 2023, we should come in celebrating Jesus for bringing us into a new year but also when we have communion, we should celebrate him for what he has done for us. Communion, the Lord's Supper, should remind us to continually give thanks to God for our needs spiritually and physically being met. Every time we have communion, we're doing it to remember who? Him. Remembering his sacrifice, remembering his suffering, remembering he provided for the new covenant for us, remembering how he gave up everything for us, remembering what he did and what he is doing for us. Every time we have communion, let's remember. Not only are we to remember what he has done in communion, we also need to realize that communion is a memorial. It's a sign, a tribute for what he's done. A memorial shows something. It remembers an event. Communion shows the world and reminds the church of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. That he loves us so much that he gave up everything for us. It's a memorial to say not only did he love us so much, but he loved the Father so much that he obeyed him in everything he did. It's a memorial to tell the world what our Lord and Savior did not only for the church, but for everyone. 
Listen, I'm so glad that Jesus didn't just die for me. He died for my crazy cousins too. He died for all of them. And I got some crazy ones, right? He died for every single person. And we need to thank God and remember that when we have communion. As I said earlier, Passover, the Passover meal Jesus instituted, it would make the disciples now to reflect, right? To reflect on the past, but it would also make them to imagine the future. The Passover would have called them to look back to how God delivered them out of Egypt and delivered Israel out of bondage. But at the same time, it would have made them to look forward to the cross, his suffering, and his resurrection three days later. For us today, though, while we don't really think about the Passover, we see it as the Lord's Supper. It causes us, too, to look back to look back to 2,000 years ago, to look back to his cross and his uh, resurrection and that he has delivered us from the bondage of sin and death and the wrath of God. He delivered you from going to hell. I know we, we want to talk about the world going to hell in the handbasket, but guess what? We was right there in the basket with him. He delivered us. He delivered us from the wrath of God. And at the same time, it requires us to look forward to what? His return. He says, do this in remembrance of me and do it as often as you can because why? He is coming back. Listen, if this is all I got to look forward to, life is terrible. But to know that he's coming back for me and for his church, I got something to celebrate. I got something to thank him about. Because he's coming back again. It is to look forward to the moment when we are with him and we're eating with him in the supper of the marriage of the Lamb of God. Where we will forever give him thanks for his body and his blood but providing for us physically and providing for us spiritually. And we will forever be able to express our gratitude for his suffering and his sacrifice and his salvation and his sanctification of us, changing us to be like him. And listen, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, Today, I encourage you to get to know him. Today, believe in what the Bible says about God and his love for you. That God loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Join with us as we give thanks to God for what Jesus has done on our behalf. He gave up everything for you so that your sins can be forgiven and so that you too can escape the wrath of God. Today, receive his salvation. Believe in the gospel. His death, his burial, and his bodily resurrection. Today, repent of your sin. Just ask God to forgive you. Today, may Jesus, the Lord of your life, and salvation, eternal life, will be yours. Today, you can look forward to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Today, you'll be able to celebrate and give thanks to God. I encourage you, give your life to Jesus this morning. If you want to give your life to the Lord, 
I just ask you to say a prayer with me. Let us bow. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I believe you sent Jesus. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he came back to life three days later. Jesus, I make you my Lord and my Savior. Now, Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us five weeks to reflect on your goodness, to reflect on your grace. Thank you for reminding us that we need to be thankful and grateful for everything you have done for us. Help us, O oh Lord, to continually remember what you have done and what you're doing in our lives. Help us, dear God, to continually express our gratitude because you've been Put your hands together and let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Listen, if you said that prayer with me, giving your life to the Lord, in a moment, the ministers will be up here. Please let them know you've given your life to Christ. If you're already giving your life to the Lord, but you're not a part of a local church fellowship, we would love for you to be a part of our family here at Mount Calvary. Please let them know you want to join this great church because we would love to walk alongside you as you walk with the Lord. And you online, if you're giving your life to the Lord or you want to join this great church, please let us know. We desire to walk alongside you as well. Amen. Amen. As the praise team sings, we ask that the ministers please come up and let us celebrate and prepare to give offerings unto the Lord.
We will now stand for our offering and dismissal. I will ask for the deacons to please come up. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this offerings that will be given, my Heavenly Father. We ask that you bless the 60, 100 fold. Pray, my Heavenly Father, that you bless those who have given and those who had a heart and desire to give, but yet not the means. Now, Lord, as we prepare to go our several ways, and we just ask for your grace and mercy to our next destination. And as we continue to pray and look towards you, my Heavenly Father, we just ask until we meet again that you go with us and guide us with a safety journey. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.